Objective 11 is to identify the major body cavities. First, we're going to have to define what those major body cavities are, then we're going to have to be able to identify them. We'll start off with a table and then we'll look at a diagram showing you the major body cavities. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the sticking points that students have had in the past with this objective. Here's a table from your textbook. Uh, and so you'll find this information also in the textbook or in your study guide on this slide. Notice that we're dividing the two major body cavities that we're looking at into the dorsal cavity and the ventral cavity. These two are completely separate from one another, both embryologically, in other words, during the process of development, and also anatomically in the adult organism. The dorsal cavity contains the brain and spinal cord, and so the dorsal cavity can be further subdivided into a cranial cavity, what's above the neck, uh, in other words, what's inside of the skull, and the vertebral cavity, what's inside of the vertebrae uh, or the spine, the bones of the spine. And so that's the cranial cavity and the vertebral cavity together making up the dorsal body cavity. The first cut we can make is to divide the ventral cavity into thoracic, and abdominal pelvic cavities. The thoracic and the abdominal pelvic cavities are divided by a diaphragm. The thoracic cavity is further subdivided, as we'll see a little bit later on in this module, into a pleural cavity, which contains the lungs, and everything in the thoracic cavity that's not the lungs, which is called the mediastinum. Within the mediastinum is the heart, and the heart is surrounded by a pericardial cavity. The pericardial cavity, as the name tells you, is the region that surrounds the heart. And so that's the cavity that the heart itself is found in. Now moving inferiorly into the abdominal pelvic cavity, we have an imaginary dividing line between an abdominal cavity, which is where the intestines, the stomach, the spleen, the liver, the gallbladder, are found, and the pelvic cavity, which only has enough of the, the intestines for excretions. So the, the rectum, which leads to the anus, is found in the pelvic cavity. Also in the pelvic cavity are the urinary bladder uh, and the internal organs of reproduction in both males and females. Now that we've seen them in the abstract on a table, let's look at a diagram. Again, the dorsal body cavity is shown in a gold or yellow color. And remember that that's divided up into a cranial cavity, what's inside the skull, and a vertebral cavity, which is what's inside the vertebral column or the bones of the spine. Then we have a ventral body cavity, which is divided into a thoracic cavity in blue and an abdominal pelvic cavity in green. Notice the color coding here is the same as on the previous slide, which was a table. The diaphragm divides the thoracic from the abdominal pelvic cavity, and nothing except an imaginary dotted line shown here divides the abdominal cavity from the pelvic cavity. One question that's continually flummoxed students, and it's because you need to develop the ability to imagine these diagrams in three dimensions, as I mentioned in an earlier video, is the question is what happens if we subdivide the human body along the line of the belly button. Uh, which cavities do we hit? And so you should be able to see from this diagram that the level of the belly button is about where the leader line is for the abdominal cavity. And if we cut this individual at the level of these leader lines, we're going to hit the abdominal cavity and we'll hit the dorsal body cavity as well. The contents of the ventral cavity are the adult derivatives of what we see in the embryo as something called the coelom. We're not going to discuss that extensively in this course, but if you take an embryology course or a gross anatomy course later on, that will be discussed extensively.